Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video in the C Sharp Auto Updater tutorial series. In this video, we are actually going to create the Sharp Update XML class. This is the class that will encapsulate the data stored in our Update XML on our server. On a side note, all of the classes except for the main Sharp Updater class, which we will get to in a future tutorial, will be internal classes. What the term internal means is that no code outside of your library will be able to use or see that code. This is exactly what we want, because we want to provide the simplest public interface to our client applications. Clients don't need to know all the internal implementation details or have access to any of the internal methods that the library uses. As you will see in a later tutorial in this series, there is going to be only one public constructor and one public method available for client applications to use. This keeps it simple and flexible because we can change the internal code of our library without having to worry about other developers having to update their client applications code to use our new interface. Back to the Sharp Update XML class, this class will have six private fields, and I will go over them as we code them in, as well as six internal properties for use inside the library that return those values. The class will also have three internal methods, one that compares version numbers, one that checks for the existence of the update.xml on the server, and one that actually parses that update XML data from the server. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is right click on our project and add a new class. We're going to call that sharp update XML. The next thing I'm going to do is import the namespaces we're going to need for this class. We're going to use using system, using system.net, and using system.xml. We're going to make this an internal class, and then we're going to go ahead and start coding. The first private field we're going to have is private version, and we'll call this version. This is going to store the update version number. The next one is going to be a private URI, and it's going to be called URI. That will store the location of the update binary that's on the server. The next one is going to be private string file name. That's going to be the file name you want the program to be called when you download it from the server. The next one is going to be a private string and it's going to be MD5. And that's going to be the MD5 hash sum of the file on the server to verify that we downloaded it correctly. The next one is going to be private string and it's going to be description. This is going to be the description that the update has, maybe a change log or something similar to that, just telling what is in the update. And the last one is going to be private string launch args. These are going to be the arguments you want to pass to the program when it's launched after the update. Now I'm going to quickly code the internal properties that correspond to each of these private fields. <laughs> Now that that's done, the next thing we're going to do is create the constructor, and it's also going to be internal, sharp update XML, and its parameters are going to be those private fields. Now that that's complete, we're going to implement the isNewerThan method. What this will do is return true or false if the current object's version is greater than the version that you pass it. So the code for that is going to be, let's move this up, internal bool is newer than, and we're going to pass it a version version. The code for that will just be return this.version is greater than version, which is the one we pass it. And that's all for that method. As you can see, it checks this version number and says, is it greater than the version that we pass it? It will return true. If it's not greater than, it will return false. The next method we are going to write is going to be called exists on server. It is also a boolean method, and it returns true if the file exists on the server, or false if it does not, or if it runs into any errors. The code will be internal static bool, and it's going to be static because it doesn't rely on the actual object. It's just going to be in this class, so we can call it any time. Exists on server. And what we want to do is pass it a URI and location. And location will be the location of the update.xml on the server that we want to check for. So we're going to surround all this code in a try catch block. And inside the try block, we're going to use the HTTP web request class. And we'll call that req for request. Equals, then we have to cast this as an HTTP web request. And we do web request dot create. And then we pass it the location dot absolute URI. The next thing we want to do is get the response from that web request. So we'll use an HTTP web response and we'll call that resp for response. And we also have to cast this as a web response. And we'll do request dot get response. Now if there's an error getting the response, the try catch block will catch it. And if there is an error at all, we want to do return false. Then we'll close the response just to free up those resources. And then what we want to do is return if the response code 
equals HTTP status code dot OK. What that means is yes, we got a good response and that file is on the server. And then if it's not equal to that and there is no error, that means it's not there or something else was wrong. That's all for this method. The final method that we're going to create is called parse. And what it will do is return a new sharp update XML object with the data that was parsed from the server. It'll also return a null object if there's any errors or it can't load the document. The code will be internal static sharp update XML and the name is parse and what we're going to do is pass it a URI again and it's going to be called location. We're also going to pass it the string and it'll be the app ID. As you saw in the sharp updatable interface the app ID will be that unique identifier to identify our application. The first thing we're going to do is set up some local variables. So version version equals null. And we're going to have a whole bunch of strings that correspond to each of the private fields. Now that those are set up, we need to do another try catch block, just in case there's any errors. And inside the try block is going to be the code that's going to parse the XML. So the first thing we need to do is set up a new XML document. And I'll call this doc equals new XML document. Then we need to load the document from the server. So doc.load, and we pass it location.absolute URI. So we'll download the XML from the location specified and load it into the doc variable. The next thing we need to do is get the XML node of our update data. So XML node, and I'll call this node, equals doc.document element. What document element is, is the root node. And then you do select single node, and then you pass it a string, which is the XPath of the node you want. I'm not going to go too in detail into XPath here, but you can check out the W3 website if you want to learn more about that. The XPath of the node we want is going to be in quotes, forward slash, forward slash, update, and then an opening bracket, at app ID equals, single quote, and then we're going to close that, plus app ID, outside of the quotes, plus quote, single quote, close bracket, and close quote mark. What that basically does is it says, find the node update with the attribute app ID equals, and then the app ID that you pass it in. The next thing we need to do is check if that node equals null, because if it equals null, that means there is no node update with that attribute that exists. So if node equals null, what we want to do is return null. Now we parse the data. The first thing we're going to parse is going to be version, and what we're going to use is the version.parse method. And inside this, we are going to pass the text that we want to parse into a version. The way to get the version number is we find the node with latest version as the node name, and then we get the inner text. So it'll be node at latest version dot inner text. And if we pass that to version dot parse, it will parse that version number and create a new version object. The next thing we want to do is the same for URL equals node at latest version URL dot inner text. This will make more sense when you see the update XML that we're actually going to create. File name equals node at file name dot inner text. And we're going to do it the same way for the last three. Now the last thing we need to do is create the new sharp update XML object and pass it all of those things we just parsed. So what we want is return new sharp update XML and then we're going to pass it version, a new URI containing the URL, then file name, then MD5, then description, and then launch args. And that will return the new sharp update XML object. Inside the catch block what we want to do if any errors happen we just want to return null. And now we have the completed sharp update XML class. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to write the hasher class, which will allow us to generate hash sums of files and strings. That will be very important when we get to downloading the file and making sure the file downloaded correctly. Please hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.